welcome to this week in the world of wrestling. Welcome to TwitWow, the best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans, by wrestling fans, on the web today. I'm John, that's my cohort and commentary, Ashton, and this is our Monday Night Raw Review. And this was actually not that bad of a Raw. Yes, not that bad of a Raw, and it was the go-home show before Money in the Bank this Sunday. And yeah, I feel like they had some really great segments. The Money in the Bank ladder match itself, I think, came out the most promoted match of the night on this show. Uh, I feel like the much-anticipated Ambrose Asylum matchup, it was a bit rough in parts for me, but overall, I think it, it landed pretty well. And yeah, I think this uh, Raw accomplished a lot, and there was quite a bit that I enjoyed. What did you think about it, Ashton? Yeah, there was a lot of stuff on this Raw that I thought was really, really well done, most of which was actually talking segments, so that makes two weeks in a row where a higher percentage of talking segments were good than matches. Um, But yeah, man, I I thought that some of the stories were progressed well, some of the Money in the Bank pay-per-view matches were really promoted well, and I kind of wish that some other ones would have been promoted better. Yeah, I can certainly see where you're coming from with that said. Let's not have any waste in motion. Let us get right into our first segment. Heat of the night. Uh, I think I just have two nitpicks, but no heats of the night tonight. I have two nitpicks as well. Oh my god, twinsies. (laughs) Uh, My first nitpick concerns the whole contract signing between John Cena and AJ Styles. Really? I thought that was an amazing segment. Uh, See, I thought it was an amazing segment, too. Like, here's where the nitpick comes from, right? It doesn't have anything to do with the two guys. Oh. It has to do with kind of the choice. Like, oh, you can have this strictly one-on-one match, or you can have this match where you have the club. And to me, I almost found it insulting because it's like, why not just play it straight? We know the club, at least my personal prediction, not an outcome, because I know we're going to be doing that this week. But I think the club's going to get involved anyway. I almost feel like that's kind of a smokescreen. It, it's an illusory choice. Like, I, I don't know. That kind of bothered me. I'm like, so what's really the difference here? Because I know what John Cena says the difference is. I just, there's no believability to it to me. With AJ being the heel in this program, he's going to keep his word despite affixing his signature to a particular contract. So yeah, that just kind of threw me off a little bit. I'm like, because when John Cena's like, oh, we're going to do this a little bit differently, I'll be honest with you. My mind immediately went to, oh, is this going to be a number one contenders match? Is this going to be like a special type of match? But to know that those are the only two options, and then John Cena turns it into some kind of moral quandary of AJ's well, career and his road to I like that, though. I really liked that, though, because Cena was basically saying, look, man, I've seen people like you before, or at least I think I've seen people like you before, and if you're the kind of person that I think you are, and if you're the kind of person that I think I've seen a million times before, you probably want all the help you can get to go against me. So I'm giving you the option to have your friends with you to fight me. And and it's one of those things where it kind of makes Cena look even more like a badass, I think. And this is kind of weird for me to be talking about John Cena being a badass because he's the furthest thing from it. But in this specific scenario, I think Cena came off as one. You know, again, I loved everything the two guys said to each other and what they personally did. Here, here's how I'll frame it for you. I think this nitpick will only hold up if at Money in the Bank, because I'm telling you, I've already got the visual in my mind. I already have the visual that in this match we're going to get a ref bump, and we have Gallows and Anderson come out. If they play this match straight from bell to bell, one-on-one, heel versus face, no shenanigans. Yeah. I like, think they're going to. I think they're going to repeat basically what we got in the first Cena-Owens match, where it's just a straight-up, clean, one-on-one, no shenanigans, no cheating, just straight-up AJ versus Cena, and that's it. And if, we, and if we do that, Ashton, if we do that, I will totally rescind this nitpick because I loved everything else. But if we don't do that, if we do get a ref bump or shenanigans or you know what I'm driving at. Then in hindsight, then, this segment was a lot pretty much worthless. Well, yeah, and, and that's I'm not even really necessarily saying it, it's worthless. Again, it goes back to a phrase I used at the beginning. It, it's an illusory choice. Like, don't act like this is a legitimate choice if you're not going to back it up. If they do exactly what you just said, make it like KO Cena 1 at Chamber. I, I'm all for that, man. I'm like, okay, I rescind the nitpick. It was unfounded. But I swear to God, if we do shenanigans for a match, you know, that's supposed to feel this big, I'm just going to shake my head and be like, 
you should have just done just a regular contract signing and not even bother with it. So, yeah, that's my first nitpick. Okay. Funny thing is, both of my nitpicks actually have to do specifically with decisions to put on a specific match at Money in the Bank that I at least one of them I probably could have complained about earlier, but I'm only getting to it now because it's finally setting in that it's actually happening. Right. What did Titus O'Neil do to actually earn a United States Championship match? He stood up to the big evil foreigner on uh, Memorial Day. You know? I mean, Kayfabe-wise, clearly... though, like, what did he actually do to earn a championship match against Rusev? Not a damn thing. I mean, I don't have a problem if he wants to go against Rusev as just a regular match, but there is literally no reason for Shane or Stephanie McMahon to give him an actual opportunity to win the U.S. title against Rusev. What's such a shame about the existence of this match is that it really is just all the proof you need that all the work that John Cena did on the U.S. title is just down the crapper. And it's not even, now let me just say this too, because people know that I'm not a Titus O'Neil fan by any stretch while I'm really a big fan of Rusev. It doesn't matter that it's Titus O'Neil. If you at least had him win a few string of matches and then maybe even, like, I don't know, pin Rusev or then do the altercation if you wanted after his string of matches and then make him contender, I'd be cool with that because you'd be telling a story. What's the story here? He the interrupted- story that I'm getting out of this is that if you ever want a United States championship match, all you have to do is go out there and save whoever's getting beat up by the champion after every match. Exactly. That's all you got to do. And maybe maybe just show up on commentary and talk bad about the champion every now and then, too. I mean, that is such a flimsy claim to contendership, and that's really why, like, I just want to kind of look past this match, but I, I've yeah. been lying. I don't have a final decision rendered, obviously, but I do kind of have a nagging feeling. Oh, my God. Are you really going to give this to Titus? I, I, I doubt it, but. Well, God, it, it's funny, too, because I, I always go back to you and how you praised so heavily the summer of, I don't remember if it was 09 or 2010, when Dolph Ziggler was trying to win the Intercontinental Championship. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was terrific. Because every yeah. single time he got into the match, he earned it. He didn't just randomly get thrown in there. He actually had to win his way into the possible championship match. Exactly. And I do believe that was the summer of 09, just to yeah. kind of put a point on it. Um, so I totally get where your nitpicks are from. Is, are there any other points you wanted to make? Because I'm sorry, I just really wanted to expound on your points and give my go, feelings. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Um, all right, I guess my second nitpick, the whole situation in the women's division. Oh, yep. That's I, actually my second nitpick was specifically the fact that we have a tag team match as our women's match that includes the champion, but doesn't involve the championship as the pay-per-view match. See, now that's a legitimate nitpick in itself. I'm going to go a slightly different direction. And again, it's just insulting booking. I mentioned to you and yeah, you know where I'm going with it. Paige, this is the second time in the lead up to a like totally different program. Cause the first one was just Charlotte Natty. Now it's Charlotte, Dana, Natty and Becky, you know, in this tag team match. Second time, though, in the lead-up to these programs, that Paige has beaten Charlotte in a non-title match. Now, the first time, she really should have cashed in her chips, funny that I used the word cashed in, for a title shot at Money in the Bank. You know, tell that story. Now, like, if Paige doesn't come out the night after Money in the Bank and be like, hey, Charlotte, I'm challenging you at Battlegrounds, I've beaten you twice, uh, you know, that's going to make no sense to me, because we can have Titus, like we just said in the preceding nitpick, come out and just stop somebody from getting beat down by the champion and get a title shot. And here this woman is in Paige, who's beaten Charlotte now twice in one-on-one matches and still no title shot to be had. So the booking is still nonsensical. It's still insulting intelligence-wise at times. And again, you know, I'm going to give the ball to you now because you came up with a point. Why is it a tag team match when Charlotte is a champion and should be defending that championship? Right. Well, and the the really funny thing, too, is, uh, you know, if you have just if you just would have watched tonight's episode of Raw, you would think, oh well, I mean, obviously after Money in the Bank pay per view, Paige is going to be going after Charlotte and challenging her for the title, right? Exactly. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. Well, we thought the same thing the week before Extreme Rules when Paige beat Charlotte then too. Right. Yeah. Plus, I'm also going to add in there. Now, this isn't set in stone. Obviously, this is exclusively a prediction on my part. I was under the impression that at the pay-per-view, Becky Lynch was going to pin Charlotte in the tag match to become the next contender. So now, are we going to have a triple threat? Becky, Paige, and Charlotte at Battleground? 
you know what? We just might. Uh, you know, and it would be funny because then we'd have or team I mean, and plus, I mean, what they were teasing tonight, Data might even turn on Charlie, so we might get a fatal four way. Oh my god! Which don't even get me started on that. But the what a are... disastrous looking match too. Like it's Charlotte. Oh god, Becky. Okay, maybe not too bad. Paige. Well, that's weird. Dana. Oh. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. Oh, dude, you know like... what? That Becky Charlotte Page would actually make a lot of sense because that's Team PCB. And I was, I was just getting ready to say that. I even kind of touched on that a few moments ago. I'm like, Team yeah. PCB could finally have their blow off. Uh, I don't know why Dana has this much invested in her. And by the way, I, dude, I'll tell you why, because Vince wants her to be the Roman of the women's division. And, and you, if he yeah. keeps pushing her like this, she will be, but in all the wrong ways, Oh my! God. she'll be the Roman of the women's division in the sense that Vince sees her as the top girl, I guess in this case, everyone is going to hate her except this time. It actually will be everyone because you won't have the female audience to cheer for her because they'll hate her just as much as the guys and she'll sell no merch. So, Way to go, Vince! You have a horrible eye for talent at 70 years old. Oh, well, it figures. I mean, Vision would certainly have to start going at that point, but... Oh, let's it... not talk about the Vince's blind rumors, either. <laughs> I didn't even know those were a thing. I think um, it was, like, at last year's Hall of Fame or something like that, somebody posted to Reddit that they thought Vince was going blind because he had a spotlight that was supposed to lead him into the stage, but it was pretty well debunked. Right. Um... Also really made me miss Emma, like, in that discovery, <sighs> because she, like, was laying into Dana with Charlotte, because she was like, oh, you know, you and Emma taking over the Divas division, that failed. Or my, my new dream is that we get two WrestleMania women's matches, the women's championship between Sasha and Bayley that I've been talking about, and the number one contenders match between Becky and Emma. I want it so bad. Yeah, dude, that would be a WrestleMania dream card for the women, but you know it's all about Charlotte. It's all about Charlotte, and it's... it's just like, I don't know, smoke some pot before coming into work and get wellness policy suspended? Well, I mean, you know, that's pretty horrible. <laughs> I want to see somebody get suspended, but drastic times, uh, desperate times, desperate measures, as the saying goes. I don't know, man. I just, I groan at this whole thing. I just want to see Charlotte drop the belt, presumably to Sasha. I can't even put certainty in that at this point. And we'll just see what happens. But is there anything else you wanted to air out in this segment? No, my, my biggest, well, like I said, with my second nitpick, my biggest issue is just like, first of all, they announce the women's match on Twitter and then very, very, very lightly touch on it on Raw. Like we had Becky and Natalia out there on commentary but it could have just as easily been just cause, you know, like there, they, they, it's not like they really put over the fact that we were going to have a tag match, you know? Yeah. It was really barely promoted by the women and, and yeah. yeah. And then of course the tag match itself, like is there, or has there ever been a WWE pay-per-view where your main champion, whether it's world or WWE or WWE world, who was healthy and could wrestle and didn't have like visa issues or anything like that, but was available to wrestle where they weren't defending their title. I can't, I, you know, I'm sure there has been in all honesty, but I can't recall in recent memory the last time like that's occurred. I feel like so. the only real situation, if that would ever happen would be if it's like a survivor series where the world champion happens to get caught up in a five on five match. Right. Or, you know, something something where they're doing something bigger than the title. But in this case, it's just a tag match and nobody gives a single shit. No, they, they, they really don't. And on that note, if there's uh, no other nitpicks that you have, there are no other nitpicks that I have. Let us get right into our Monday Night Raw review. And we open up a uh, very respectful, very tasteful, you know, moment of silence for the Orlando shooting. Everybody out on stage, everybody, you know, doing that whole thing. So I thought that was very nice, very well done. But then when we get to the Before actual... Before you move on, John, I just thought of another nitpick that I had. Floor is yours. It, it's, it's more of a predictive nitpick than an actual issue with tonight's show. Okay. They're bringing back all these former GMs to try and quote-unquote audition for SmackDown. Yeah. My preemptive heat of the night is don't you dare even think about bringing back the goddamn anonymous raw GM again. 
It's already happened once. We've already had one time where the night just ended with the, the freaking computer going haywire. And we were supposed to have the anonymous Raw GM the following week. And I think it showed up like one time because the WWE realized how horribly it was received. Don't even freaking think about doing it again. Well, we'll wait and see on that, my man. But <sighs> God, that would be it. And please, for the love of God, if you feel the need to bring back John Laurinaitis, at least bring back Vicky Guerrero, too. Yeah, really? Yeah. Because I, I would put money on them bringing back Johnny Ace. Yeah, probably. I just feel like if they're going to do that, we've got to get Vicky in here because she was a SmackDown GM once, and she's actually, you know, charismatic to a degree. Yeah, I don't know if they'll be able. I mean, I know it would just be a one-off appearance. It shouldn't be too hard. I just know mm-hmm. that I guess she's really deep into her nursing and stuff like that because that's what she's doing now as a profession. So we'll see. I mean, should be interesting who else they bring. Who else uh, do you think they will bring, John? We've already had Teddy Long and Corporate Kane. Who's left other than Johnny, the anonymous GM, and Vicky? It would be very interesting if Paul Heyman angled for that spot. Oh, that would be so good. But just because it is so good, you know they're not going to do it. Yeah, you're probably right. Especially because Paul Heyman on WWE television immediately makes people think of Brock Lesnar, and he's going to be in UFC this summer. Yeah, he is. That's going to be very interesting. But (laughs) with that said, as we inch closer to the draft and all this speculation about GMs. Yeah, let's uh, open up Raw. Yeah, and we open up Raw with the New Day. They come out, energy's hot so far in New Orleans. New Orleans, at least in my estimation, was kind of a mixed bag tonight. They were really hot for some segments, pretty mad for others. Yep. Uh, but they were hot here, uh, really received the New Day quite well. And really the running gag in this promo, they're really giving Kofi a hard time over his shoes. Apparently they're like Stephen Curry type shoes, which of course he's like a really big NBA player. I don't follow basketball that intimately, but at least I know that much. You know, and he's the biggest basketball star right now. Yeah, he apparently like runs the basketball world, you know, especially NBA. So giving Kofi a really hard time, riffing him on it. He's trying to defend himself. But then Enzo and Cass come out. And I got to say, like, I think what I really liked about this, yes, there was a lot of innuendo in this promo. But I think they did it in an appropriate way, given the setting is New Orleans, because Enzo Cass come out. Do you have something you want to say? I was just thinking, like, and here's the thing, guys. I didn't get to see the first 30 minutes of Raw. I wasn't home until 8.30 tonight. But from what you were telling me, uh, it feels like they might have crossed the PG line a little bit, maybe. Oh, they definitely did. Oh, yeah. I can tell you in no uncertain terms that they did, but I loved it. Like Enzo, I, Enzo talking about how he had his lips all over. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I personally loved it because to put it in context, guys, before you shield your children's ears or your eyes or whatever. Oh, uh, forget it. Like, your children are going to be exposed to this eventually. If you're censoring them, you're going to make it more devastating when they get to it. And trust me, your children suck anyway, and they're going to end up as failures. This really won't do any more harm. So, oh my God, you know. John, I was trying to be reasonable about this. Yeah, that was your problem, not mine. But uh, <laughs> Francesca gets involved because Cass uh, asks uh, Xavier. By the way, I meant to ask you, have you ever heard the people that refer to Big Cass as Kaz? No. Like with a Z sound, like he's freaking Kazarian or something? No, I, I I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't either, but I've listened to two different podcasts now where their hosts called him Kaz. That uh, that's on them, and that should. <laughs> it's be- so weird. Listen, people, if you want your wrestling news and commentary from people that actually pronounce names properly, or at least one of the two people pronounce names properly, <laughs> TwitWow is where you go. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree on that because, you know, even if we do butcher names, at least we try and give a good effort. So, yeah, I mean, we there... mispronounced a lot of names in G1 last year, and since then we have corrected ourselves. So, yeah, we, we learn, people. We learn. Exactly. We're sentient. But, uh, oh. so, yeah, just a lot of innuendo with Xavier's trombone, you know, Francesca. And he says, oh, well, she's an independent woman. She could go wherever she wants. And then it just kind of degenerates into, oh, well, she was with Enzo. And then I think the crowd actually ooed, which I'm like, what is this, an 80s soundtrack? This is great. It's Uh, a freaking brass instrument, people. And uh, Enzo's like, oh, yeah. 
I had my mouth all over her. My fingers were playing her just right, like Louis Armstrong. And, and Xavier's face is just like, oh, oh, no, you didn't. That's my woman. And it's just, you know, it seems like it was really about to go down. And then <laughs> Kofi's like, oh, it's the moment you've all been waiting for, the verbal joust between Enzo and Cass and the New Day. And, and by the ready. way, can I get a confirmation? Did Xavier Wood seriously say, I'm the only one who blows my girl? Yes, he did say that. <laughs> He did say that. Oh, the PG boundaries were pushed and probably crossed tonight, and I am perfectly okay with that. Oh, you and me both, brother. This was great. And then you had the vaudevillains come out, and they pretty much say, uh, it, you know, let the men have the room, pretty much referring to the four guys as children. And, you know, we need tag team champions with values from a bygone era. And then Oh, my English. God, these guys are so bad. To be fair, I mean, it's kind of the point, John, that the lines are blurred. I don't know if I hate them because I don't think they're good performers or if I hate them because I think that they're just really good heels. See, I'll be curious what happens with them when they're out of the mix, because I I do think they do good heel work to a point. But at the same time, I don't want to get it twisted. Maybe they're only getting this heat because they interrupted two incredibly over. Yeah, because they like over the last two weeks or maybe even the past month or so, they've become like the WWE's token cock blockers when it comes to charismatic promos. <laughs> right. So, you know, and then Aiden English thinks about how they're the best tag team in the WWE. But then my personal favorite part of this, which is shocking given that we got Enzo Cass and, and the New Day, Anderson and Gallows come out and they're just like, everybody shut up. Just like that. They're just like, shut up. And, 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 you know, they think you're all just a bunch of children. And what it is about is attacking titles and we're going to win them. And if what we're seeing in this ring is any indication, it's going to be easier than scoring a touchdown on the New Orleans Saints. So they do the obligatory, oh, take a cheap shot at the place where Raw is tonight. I mean, I, let's be you know, fair. The Saints defense and really just that whole team is pretty god awful. Oh, yeah, totally. I, as a Falcons fan, I was smirking from ear to ear at that line. You're not like, supposed to out us, John. They already know it, dude. <laughs> not everyone. This might be some people's first twit wows. Come on, man. Well, then where have you been, people? Welcome, welcome, and we're glad to have you, yeah. but yes, welcome absolutely. Welcome to your new favorite wrestling podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but self-promotion aside, we transition from that to just an Just wait, eight. just wait till we hit that thousand sub special. Everything's gonna change for the better, people. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there, people. We're getting there. But uh, I'll tell you, we're also- I've got also some stuff in store that John doesn't even know about, guys, so there you go. Oh, look at that. That's that's quite secretive. But I'm just going to bury that in... afterwards. But yeah, he doesn't know about it yet. I'm going to bury that in the back of my mind and worry about it for the next hour. But <laughs> we go to an eight man tag. Enzo and Cass in the New Day versus uh, Anderson and Gallows and the Vaude Villains. Pretty solid tag match. You know, good back and forth. It's a good way to promote the tag title match. But in the end, I like the finishing sequence because... Cass, I believe, took out Simon Gotch, but then Aiden English does a drop kick that takes out Cass. Uh, Aiden English goes out to the floor. He gets belly to belly by Big E, but then Big E gets booted in the face by Gallows. Yeah. And then Gallows goes on the apron while uh, Anderson and Kofi are having a skirmish. He makes a blind tag. Oh, Kofi. Kofi has Anderson rolled up. He's got him all pinned. But then Gallows, I think, kicks him pretty much like square in the mush there. Kofi's out of it. And then uh, Anderson and Gallows hit the magic killer. And I believe Gallows, because he was the one that made the blind tag, pins Kofi. So the club, uh, in the form of Anderson and Gallows, have pinned the New Day as it relates to Kofi. So that gives them momentum related to Money in the Bank. And they stand tall here. So good match with a really fun ending sequence. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I would have seen it. I'm going to have to check out the highlights on YouTube afterwards, and hopefully they put that pre-match promo up because I'm really curious to see that. And, yeah, I'm I'm sort of – I don't know. I, I, the idea that they just kind of gave us the entire match that we're already going to be getting at Money in the Bank, eh, at least that's going to be for the titles, but you've got everybody that's going to be in that match also in this match. I'm not really a huge fan of that, but I can kind of see where they were going. It's just one of those things where why couldn't you do something more creative with this and spread it out a little more so that the rest of Raw wasn't, you know, boring. 
I mean, I could certainly see where you're coming from. Absolutely. I guess and, I think uh, it would have been inter- entertaining if we would have had, like, here's something that you never see. Why don't we get, like, mixed up tag team partners? Like, just for example, maybe Big E teams up with Enzo to take on the team of Aiden English and Carl Anderson. I get what you're driving at, like playing with the formula a little bit. Yeah, you just know, kind tweak of it up, up a little bit. This feels so formulaic. Oh, that's That was the theme of Raw tonight. It was the entire show, and even some of the promos, one in specific that I'm going to talk about later, felt so formulaic and cookie cutter and paint by numbers. It wasn't a bad show in the sense that it made me want to change the channel, but it was a bad show in the sense that it didn't really do anything that really got me excited. I can totally see where you're coming from there. I'll be looking more uh, forward to getting your more in-depth thoughts because I know, like, after this point, you were a part of the show. You were able to see everything that Was happened. Was I? Overall. I feel like I don't um... – Well, I know uh, you yeah, saw what we got yeah, next. Yeah, the corporate because... cane thing. Yeah, you're right. Up next was the corporate cane thing, right? Well, I mean, yeah, before that, we did get a Make Darren Young Great Again vignette, which I know yeah. you've been loving these. Well, I can't and, and wait to I, I was you. here to see that, but even if I hadn't been here to see that, it was the same one from SmackDown this past week. Right, right. I feel like they've been doing that with all of these, where they'll play on SmackDown first and then Raw. I'm just wondering, like, is is Backlund actually going to be on TV managing Darren? I really, really hope he does. And and I hope that even, like, we've talked about this before, I hope that that, we're going to make Darren Young great again line is what hits on the loudspeaker before Darren's music hits. That would be amazing. I yeah. want it, man. I want it. That would be so cool. I don't know if they're going to do it just because they might not give Darren that much of like a star treatment, but I think it would be awesome if they did. You know, I mean, I just can't wait to see him debut. And here's the thing. The closer he debuts to the to the actual draft, maybe the better for him in the long run. Like if he goes on a show where maybe he'd have a chance to kind of rise to the top a bit more. I wouldn't be opposed to that. I do think SmackDown is going to end up being that show. I think a lot of people are operating under that assumption. So we'll see. But yeah, I mean, if this these vignettes have accomplished anything, it's really made me anticipate his debut, uh, presumably with Bob Backlund in tow. So this is good stuff. And then, yeah, uh, as you- speaking of which, uh, just going to get one of these out. Bob Backlund and Captain Crunch are Eskimo brothers. That is very interesting. I did not know that. So. After this, we get Shane McMahon backstage, and to your point, Ashton, he's there with Stephanie, and they're arguing about who's going to run the shows, and then we get Corporate Kane interrupt. And is it just me, or has Stephanie just completely foregone the babyface illusion, and she's just straight back into bitch mode again? Yeah, which is really, really uninteresting. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, too. Like every I'm time laughing she comes because running, you're yeah. right, and I have nothing to add. Yeah, I mean, that that's just it. And then Kane coming in. I think you kind of gave your thoughts about this a little bit. You know they, what, I mean, though? I really liked Kane's, you know, arsonist puns. <laughs> You're just a punny guy. I yeah, am. I got to tell you, when he says it'll really burn your house down <laughs> with a straight face, like it's a good thing. <laughs> and two, I also I love the Undertaker thing. He's like, oh yeah, I've got a recommendation letter. You might know him. It's my brother, the Undertaker. Just imagining the dead <laughs> man himself sitting down at a computer and trying to figure out how to type a recommendation letter for his brother Kane. Yeah, that is pretty comical imagery. I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know true. what? What makes it even funnier is if you can imagine him doing it because he doesn't understand computers. He does it at a typewriter instead. Oh my God, that would be so him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I can see it. I can actually yeah. see it. Yeah. Just, so you really yeah, didn't mind this then too much. You seem to enjoy it. It's a different kind of old school. Right. So you seem to enjoy this then a little bit. I, I enjoyed the segment for what it was, but the idea of it is what I have a problem with because now they're going to bring back the anonymous raw GM and I'm going to change the channel. Well, there you go. I mean, hell, they may not do it. They may go a totally different route, but if they do, at least we know what your reaction is going to be ahead of time. Cause, yeah, there you go. Yeah, visceral reaction there. Uh, Primo and Epico vignette, a new one, talking about how the beaches are clean and you don't have to worry about like us dirtying our beaches any more than we already do. We could just come to Puerto Rico and see what a clean beach looks like. <laughs> and why aren't these guys competing? It's pretty much the same thing you and I have been saying for a while now. Like, I want to see them compete. You want to see them compete. I'm tired of these vignettes. Did and, you forget yeah. to talk about Zack Ryder laughing at Sheamus? 
We're getting to that. I, I don't think that came That happened yet. before The Shining Stars. Did it really? Yeah. I don't have it in these listings here, so that's my mistake. But yeah, he did <laughs> laugh at Seamus. Uh, talking about how Apollo Crews, you know, popped him in the mouth. And then Seamus comes up to him and says, oh, you know, that's that's really funny, Zach. And apparently, like, they have a match tonight. And he says, you know, during that match tonight, I'm going to show you just like I'm going to show Apollo Crews and Money in the Bank, you know, what happens when you laugh at me, you know, that whole thing. And then Zach's like, oh, hey, Apollo, how you doing? And Seamus is looking around all scared, and Zack Ryder walks up. He's like, oh, real funny, Zack. You think you're real funny, huh? And, you know, just getting all angry. So we do know that we're getting Seamus and Zack Ryder tonight. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Zack Ryder is a thing. Yes. Yes, he is. A very comical thing. A very sad thing. But he is indeed a thing. How can uh, somebody be both comical and sad at the same time? Well, when you hate him like I do, it's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so... After this, we have Titus O'Neil, his music hits, and he comes out, but then Rusev jumps him. So whatever match that Titus O'Neil uh, was scheduled to have, we were mercifully spared from that, thanks to Rusev. And tell me again who the heel is here. And he just beats the crap out of Titus, where it ultimately ends with him putting Titus in the accolade. I mean, for what it's worth, I'm pretty sure the heel here is the guy that did the, the sneak attack from behind. Yeah, I, I contend that, but regardless... <laughs> you contend that? What do you mean? Well, like, I, I mean, Titus is pretty awful. I mean, did Rusev really do a heelish thing, or did he do a kindness? It's like, oh, instead of seeing Titus compete, now you just get to see him eat dirt. And, you know, I'm I'm not one to really condemn him for that. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, again, though, with a segment like this, it does make me a little worried. Like, is Titus going to pull off the upset? Ultimately, I doubt it right now. I mean, SmackDown's still a thing. And then, of course, we have our formal Money in the Bank preview and predictions video. But, yeah, I got, got that nervous feeling in the pit of my stomach, folks. But after that, we get the segment, which was hyped up, by the way, with S.H.I.E.L.D. recaps, like memories sprinkled throughout the night. Yeah, this segment was so disappointing to me. Wow. Okay, you take the ball then. If you were disappointed, I want you to talk about this segment first. What, what were your thoughts on it? You know, it just put forward everything that's wrong with what's going wrong with this feud right now. Well, I mean, specifically, like, what do you mean? Like, Roman still being a face, you Ro mean? Exactly. How Roman uh, trying to be that baby face. Seth Rollins. It's funny because, you know, I almost feel like I have to sort of scold Seth Rollins because he basically cut a baby face promo here. Yeah, I... I, I think, though, ultimately to come around to the point like, oh, yeah, it was great, but it was so much better when I betrayed you guys. No, so, that's not the one. That's not the one. I'm talking about the one he cut towards the end when he was like, you know, I carried this company on my back. I never lost my time. Like, he was getting so much baby face fire going on. Uh, and then and then Dean was just like, you know, what if I cash in? And he completely took everything and made it about himself. So... I mean, that I did like, though, because actually, I'll be honest with you, I would have been more frustrated if they didn't do that last part of, of Dean kind of, you know, asserting himself, because he is in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And especially you, because I know you've been, like, saying, like, you think Dean is, like, the favorite to win, all this other stuff. I don't know if it'll change by the time we do preview predictions, but Dean's been pretty much kind of a lock for you. Almost, whereas, you know, like, I'm all KO, which we'll get no, to that later. No, see, that's the thing, though. Like, the only reason that I'm so hard in Dean's corner is because of how hard you are in Kevin Owens' corner. Kevin Owens is still my number two pick to win Money in the Bank. Right, right, as you expressed to me. Um, so, you know, we'll see how it all comes out. But, I mean, even, and you know what, even, like, taking us out of the equation, I think even commentary touched on the point maybe last week or two weeks ago, oh, you know, very interesting implications with Dean and the Money in the Bank ladder match and these two competing for the world title. So then you really, you kind of manifest that in this segment. And, yeah, I think the way it was punctuated, it almost had to be punctuated that way because it was still just about uh, Rollins and Reigns with Ambrose as kind of a third wheel, you know, it's like, eh, well, that, that really makes Dean look great for the Money in the Bank ladder match. So, yeah, I mean, you were disappointed by this because I don't think you like any of the dynamics going on here, right? Because you got Roman as the quote-unquote face, Seth as the heel when he's getting the babyface fire and cutting babyface-esque promos. And I think even Dean really didn't do it for you in this segment either because I think I even heard you say, like, you thought Dean was kind of annoying you a little bit. Or well, when he, was, when he was getting all up in Seth's face and, and basically trying to annoy Seth, by just kind of doing that and acting that way, he kind of annoyed me too. So. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't mind this. You know, it, it's funny because they were really making it seem like S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion, S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion. But I guess it really shows how, how far WWE has gone in, like, establishing these guys in certain ways, except for Roman, who still has the S.H.I.E.L.D. gear and the uh, redone, like, version of the S.H.I.E.L.D.'s music. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and actually, you know what? I'm sorry. You finish your thought, and then I have something to add. Oh, certainly. I'm not going to forget that you have something to add. I was just going to say, like, it didn't feel like a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion at all to me, oddly enough. Like, right. I don't know. Just something odd about it. I'm like, oh, these are three guys that used to tag together. It's kind of sad that I've forgotten that, yeah, these guys, they wore the shield. They kind of ran everything. It just it didn't have that feel to me, man. Maybe when they all come out in the same vest, then maybe I'll get pumped. But, yeah, just I wasn't really feeling that connection that I think they wanted me to feel. But I, I did like it overall. It just didn't have that impact. But what were you going to say? Yeah, I, I actually have this written down in my notes, and I forgot to bring it up. Why is Dean Ambrose so cool with being within the vicinity of Seth Rollins? I I don't know. Why <laughs> does he not want to rip his head off like he always has? Uh, inconsistent writing. <laughs> That's the only excuse, right? Because like, why is it that now after this, I guess did, did Seth Rollins getting injured make Dean Ambrose have sympathy for him? And if that's the case, why does the WWE expect us to not have sympathy for him? Uh, that's actually a very legitimate point. And really, I don't know what's going on with the writing of Ambrose lately because he had that one raw fallout segment where he's like, yeah, I'm going to climb up some ladders. I'm going to fall down. some But like very chill, right? Very even tone. Not like this excited kind of like frenzy like Ambrose that I'm used to. He almost seems like he's mellowed out. Like it's mellowed out Ambrose we're dealing with now. It's like, oh, you have an opinion? Oh, you have a different opinion? It's all cool, man. <laughs> Stone out Ambrose. <laughs> Stone out Ambrose. Which, hey, man, I'm cool with it. Toke it up from sundown to sun up. You know what I'm saying? But like. <laughs> You know, just show me some fire, man. Seriously, it's a, that's really what this Ambrose style came off like. Like, oh, Seth, you have an opinion? Oh, well, that's a very aggressive opinion. Roman, how do you feel about it? Okay, very nice retort. I, we're well, all being I, cool I, about this. I understand this. your opinion, but it was difficult because you're so bad at stating it. <laughs> exactly. But you know what? I'm just, I'm just happy we're all cool right now. We're all so cool. And, you know, I'm just like, what's going on? Um, but I, I will say, though. Uh, another thing that I, I liked about this segment, because we were touched on the skirmish that all three kind of had at the end uh, earlier, you have Roman take out Seth, but then Dean takes out Roman, which I found satisfying because I feel like Dean always gets bitched out by Roman every time they're in the ring together. So I'm like, just give Dean one, just one. And I think they did. They finally gave him one and he lays out Roman last and he's kind of looking up at the briefcase. So yeah, not a bad segment. I think there were some hits and, and some misses. I can certainly see where you're coming from. And that was it. That was the big, oh, look, all three members of the Shield in the same ring together. And it didn't quite have the pop, for me anyway, that I really expected it to. So I wonder how everybody else in the comments felt about this segment. Did you like it? Did you love it? Were you middle of the road towards it? Uh, yeah. Let us know what you thought. Yeah, like that was that was my biggest problem was like Seth and Dean are in the ring. And Seth is talking about the thing that Dean Ambrose hates most about him. The fact that he turned on him and then Roman and broke up the shield. And Dean's just like, yeah, cool, man, whatever. You're kind of annoying. I'm going to make fun of you now. But then I'm going to go right back to Roman as if nothing's even going on. And if the WWE had consistent writers, these guys would be like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, and they wouldn't be able to be in the same ring with each other without taking swings at each other's faces. Right, right, which I, I love, you know, that view is a good template for how these three should be with each other, or if nothing else, Dean and Roman as a unit against Seth Rollins, and when Seth but, Rollins out of the equation, maybe you have Dean steal a quick glance at the briefcase while Roman has his back to him. Right, but see, that's the thing, though. Roman has never really been that wild about Rollins breaking up the shield. Roman's always had his sights set on the title, so the fact that he has the title, it would make sense that he's kind of chill about everything. But Dean... As soon as they broke up, the first thing that he did was, Rollins, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to make your life miserable. You ruined everything. I hate your face. And he really <laughs> didn't abandon that mantra until literally tonight. And we don't know why. Exactly. Uh, maybe he's keeping his cards close to his chest. Maybe or if he maybe, wins money in the bank, maybe you know. Maybe he legitimately has been hitting the ganja and we just don't know about it. Yeah, maybe. maybe. It's possible. It's possible. Which, I mean, hey, good sir. I mean, I, I will defend your right to do it. So there you go. I mean, again, I would like if Dean does win Money in the Bank, which is, I mean, definitely a very viable 
possibility. Oh, all sure. Now you admit that it's viable. Hey, objectively, objectively, I've always said he's one of the biggest threats. Is he going to win? No, because Kevin Owens is better than all of you. But if Dean does win, it would be interesting to see him really torment Rollins or Reigns, for that matter, with just, oh, you know, good luck with that match. It would be a shame if something happened to it kind of deal, you know? Uh, so really get Ambrose back in the mix, really get him to be kind of a presence in the world title picture if they go that route. So... With that said, is there anything else you want to say about this Ambrose Asylum segment? I don't think so. I think I got everything off my chest. Let's move on. All right. We do get Ambrose kind of walking backstage after, you know, kind of standing tall in that whole skirmish. Can we talk about the brawl that broke out? What brawl? The Ambrose Asylum brawl. Yeah, we've mentioned it multiple times. We said Dean, like, stood tall because Roman did yeah. the Superman punch to Seth, and then, yeah. The I love that. Like, I had goosebumps. Yeah, that was great. That was really well done. Um, but yeah, Ambrose is so proud of himself that, he, you know, kind of, st uh, stood tall, you know, he's walking backstage, Stephanie intercepts him. She's like, oh, you must be so proud of yourself. You know, you got your cute little, uh, talk show back, you know, thanks to my brother, Shane, cause apparently Shane gave him the show back. And, uh, Dean's like, yeah, yeah, it's a good talk show. So still like chill Dean Ambrose. And, um, she says, well, you know, tonight, since you're in the mood, you know, to be so physical and everything, you've got a main event with Chris Jericho. So really a rehash of SmackDown because you got to get one match a week, I guess. It's like a rehash of SmackDown on Raw. So Dean's like, oh, that's fine. But all this anger, all this hatred, you feel, it's not contagious, is it? Because I wouldn't want to catch it. And then Stephanie leaves Ambrose with the idea, well, you know, Dean, hatred isn't a bad thing if you know how to use it, which I'd be more interested in if I had any inclination that Dean was going heel anytime soon, but I don't get that impression at all. So I'm just like, okay, just wisdom dispelled by Stephanie. Uh, anything you want to say about this? You make a great point there. It just makes no sense. Like, why, what does she, th does she think that she's going to, like, turn him? Does she, or is that just her justifying her own actions? I mean, if, if it was, like, a little hint, and, and see, like, now this is, like, my Lucha Underground brain going, because we know commentary is, like, planted hints in the past, and if I'm just like, oh, are they actually saying that Dean's going to have hatred in his heart he's gonna cash in on roman because roman ain't dropping that thing anytime soon and dean cashes in maybe he steals it from him then he just goes on that heel run that you and i have been kind of envisioning really for years and does that but like i've got no inclination that that's gonna be a thing even even if you'd want to make the argument oh well he laid out roman last you know in that whole brawl look at how roman's received is that really the action of a bad man by Ambrose? I don't think so. I think it's just three guys that know that the world title is everything, and they're willing to put even friendship aside, or in uh, you know Rollins's case, whatever animosity he feels towards those guys, you know, to get it done. And you know, Dean, yeah, him and Roman are tight, but like they fought over the world title before, so that doesn't even make it characteristically out of the ordinary, you know. So it's just a weird thing for Stephanie to say overall. Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know, John. Okay. Oh God! Every, everything, everything's just so stupid. And then, speaking <laughs> of that, uh, we go, you, you know, Paige versus Charlotte. We already kind of touched on this with the nitpick. And I, can I just say two? No, you can't. Uh, okay, we can move on. I'm joking. Uh, say it. <laughs> but um, no, I love to like how this all went down, like the final moments of the match, because Dana can play innocent and act like she was only trying to help Charlotte. But you and I both saw it. The way she put her back in that ring was very aggressive. Like, what did you think? Did we she... not have a moment similar to this in NXT? I I feel like we may have. What I you feel mean, like, like we did, too. I don't even know if it was Dana, but I could have sworn we had a moment like this in NXT where there was a tag team women's match. It might have even been with Summer and Sasha when they were team. I don't even remember. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't Team Bay because that was Sasha and Becky. Team BFFs, BFF, the BFFs, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't remember. It might have been with them, but I remember distinctly. It might have been with Summer and Sasha. It might have been with Sasha and Charlotte. It might have been with Sasha and Becky. I don't know. God, Becky's been in – or Sasha's been in a lot of teams. But anyway, <laughs> um, I just feel like – we had a moment in NXT where there was a tag team match and somebody got rolled out of the ring. It might have even been with Dana and Emma, for all I know. And one of the women tossed the other one in back into the ring aggressively, like what Dana did tonight. And it caught, I think it was Summer that got rolled back in the ring for some reason. And I think it might have even been against Paige because then she ended up losing right away. So if this, I feel like this is like early days of NXT with Sasha and Summer and Paige. Yeah, I mean, like... 
I don't know, man. I kind of face palmed at this because I'm like, okay, you, you want almost me to... have to make a story out of this, don't you? Well, I I almost feel like they wanted to, but in their own way. Like yeah. I thought this was Dana really being like, screw you, Charlotte. And I, I'm being this because that was an aggressive putback. It was. I she, was gonna... she like grabbed her by <laughs> the collar and shorts and threw her back in the ring, like what you would do if you were really angry at someone in a tag team match and wanted to get them back in the ring to. Like, beat them down with your partner. Exactly, Ash. And it was almost like Danderberg was like, no, Charlotte, you're doing this match. Yeah. And then, like, Paige wins and she's like, oh, Charlotte, you should have told me you weren't ready. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man. you know, Paige wins. And I'm just sitting here like, did Dana have a face turn? And then it's like, no, because then Charlotte's like, well, grab the title, Dana. Grab the title. You know, and that, oh. God, that almost shriek that she has. And then they retreat up the ramp together. And I just, I resist the temptation to create an indent in my desk for another night. <laughs> I I miss Sasha. I miss Emma. Was I miss it Jack literally the, uh, the segment after this that we actually got to see backstage Charlotte yelling and basically pissing on Dana Brooke? I believe it was, yes. Of course it was. Well, at least they're doing things in order tonight. But yeah, like... We get this whole huge big segment, Sasha and Dana, or uh, Charlotte and Dana. God, I miss Sasha. I even talk about her when she's not on TV. But, like, we get this whole thing with Charlotte and Dana talking with, with, you know, Charlotte just pissing all over Dana, telling her about how awful she is and how she failed and just everything horrible. And now she's just like, oh, well... You know, we still have training to do. And then Dana's just like, yeah, okay, let's go. And they're just cool again. What? But, I mean, Dana sounded so resigned and so defeatist about it. She it was... did. And then she just went through with it anyway. Like, I, I honestly, I don't even like Dana Brooke as a wrestler, as a performer. But I legitimately feel bad for the girl playing her because she's so lost in the shuffle right now. She really is. Like she came, she oh, literally the only reason they brought her up from NXT was because of her spiel with Emma, and immediately Emma gets hurt, and she just is just drowning right now. God, and then and then when Charlotte again had that, so oh, you and Emma tried something and it failed. Oh, I wish Emma was healthy, and I wish she I know, Charlotte right dude. In the face. I want oh, Emma back so soon. I want her back I, now. I want Emma back yesterday. I want Emma back for Raw tonight. I, I want Emma back, and I want Sasha doing what she does best. I see her talking about it all on Twitter, these meet and greets, and that's nothing against Sasha, but I'm like, woman, you should be in the ring. You're too good for this shit. Like, rage. And well, other that's Riley the thing, though, either. is, like, they're keeping her off TV because of how positive a reaction she gets. And, like, I get it, but yet I don't another, get it. Can I just say, though, yet another example of somebody being punished for being over. I know. I know. It's like, oh, Sasha, we're sorry. We have to punish you for doing your job. But oh, really... I'm sorry, Sasha, but we have these other girls that aren't doing your job as well as you, so we're going to have to ask you to not do your job for a little while. Yeah. That's literally <laughs> what they're saying. Can I point this out? That is literally <laughs> what is going on right now. Sasha, you did your job better than anyone else because you got yourself over more than anyone else. But because of that, because of these other women that aren't doing their job as well as you, that aren't as over as you, we need you to just straight up not do your job for a while. And I'm never going to forgive Vince for that. Why? Because we got that backstage segment that we just got done talking about. Like, yeah, that's like... what happens when you keep uh, Sasha <laughs> off the product. That's what happens. Fuck you, Vince. <laughs> Sasha, like, we know that you got a fair and square lead in the race. But here's the thing. All these other people are slower than you, so we just need to ask you to stop running for a second. Just take a break. When they catch up to you, you can start running again, and we're sure you'll, you'll still be faster than them and you'll still win the race anyway, but we just need to make it look like it's a close race. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's their mindset, folks, and it's one that I vehemently disagree with. And yet I am so powerless, and I cannot tell you how soul-crushing that is. Um, <laughs> well, it is soul-crushing, but we're not the only ones that are powerless in this situation. Everyone is, except for the people that actually matter, which sadly comes down to one man named Vince. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> Even the writers are powerless at this point, because even if they write something they think is cool, if Vince shoots it down, what are they going to do? 
Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. So with that said, let's move on. Uh, Shamus. Yes, Sheamus and Zack Ryder. Uh, very quick match, not really too memorable. I think Zack Ryder got his broski boot in, but he never follows it up with the rough he also rider got, anymore. He also got the elbro drop in. <laughs> oh, Zack. Uh, what a joke. He tries the rough rider, and like everything else he's trying in his life, he ends up just really falling flat on his face. Literally, his face eats the top turnbuckle, then it eats a bro kick. For a three count, and then when Sheamus is about to be a good Samaritan and continue the beat down on Zack Ryder, <laughs> Apollo Cruz decides to be a hero and come out and chase Sheamus off. Now, I will say, <gasps> uh, can I just say before you say that, I love how much disdain you have for this idea that somebody's saving Zack Ryder. I just, I hate him so much. Like, I, I want him to quit so bad. I want so, him to know. Can I ask? how much of that has to do with just the precognition and the fact that you just have never liked him? And how much does that have to do with that? He was with, with Emma now. See, now you, you just constantly bring that up. And like, we're all adults here. Well, I yeah, think I'm going to keep bringing it up until you stop making it weird. <laughs> Look, I think it's, it's 98% precognition. I, I just hate his face. Like I want him <laughs> to know that he failed because he is a failure. That's what oh. you do. You'll never succeed. I, well, I mean, I, it's probably safe to say Seamus taught him that lesson tonight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he showed him, you know, you want to talk about how you'll be a WWE world Heavyweight champion. Not if I have anything. To you, dude, you got to realize you couldn't even say you are going to be the WWE world heavyweight champion regarding Zack Ryder <laughs> straight faced for that one time just as Seamus. Yeah. Yeah. Because like your I'm... body has such like a guttural <laughs> rejection of that thought that you can't even <laughs> say it while in like character as someone else in a hypothetical situation. Failure. Anyway, so Apollo Crews, which apparently Jesus. according to Charlotte is what Dana Brooke is and she's still <laughs> cool with her. So whatever. Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, people have a threshold for you know, emotional abuse, you know, and, and again, so wait, you know, am I, am I getting these things wavelengths, right? You want to date Zack Ryder now? No, oh. no. Um, so after that, uh, I, I got here in my notes that Kevin Owens and Alberto Del Rio, while well, Kevin Owens is backstage, first of all, with Shane and Kane, cause Shane and Kane are kind of talking things out. And Ash, what do you think of this segment here? Cause I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, uh, I don't know. Kevin Owens to me, He's got a direct line to my funny bone. Like I know. Well, certain then you need to talk stuff. about this because Kevin Owens is such a good heel that he actually annoyed me tonight. So I'm gonna let you take this. I thought that was only for commentary. I didn't know it was. No, it was. Show. It was during this segment too. Like everything. Like whenever he is just talking to somebody and it's just completely improv improvisational and there isn't like an actual back and forth where he just kind of cuts people off and talks over people, it gets on my nerves. Uh, can I just say too, as a quick side before I really unpack this segment, like. It seemed like Kevin Owens got a lot of time on TV tonight, which I love, and I'm never going to protest. Right. But I'm hoping that actually gives credence to the idea that Vince has <laughs> kind of warmed up on KO. I oh, of course. That. Because so. let's read into everything as long as it makes us believe that Kevin's winning money in the bank. Hey, wow. Wow, you're bitter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, those claws came out. I, I, am just, I am just so looking forward to the Money in the Bank pay-per-view because whether you're right or wrong, we can stop with this constant KO for MITB 16 nonsense. Well, you know, I'm sorry that I got something going. <laughs> Salty ass. But anyway. <laughs> yes, I am. Kev Kevin Owens uh, pretty much talking about, you know, D Del Rio, he was late at the airport. And, you know, is that really somebody that we want representing this company? Is that professionalism to you? Which, of course, Kevin Owens is 100% right. It isn't. And, you know, when Shane, because he obviously can't do the job himself, inquires to Kevin Owens, well, what would you do about it? you know, consulting actually wise people. Kevin Owens says, well, I think Del Rio should lose his spot in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And, of course, they're going to shoot that down. But before they can even do that, Del Rio comes in and he starts talking Spanish, which Kevin Owens has said time and time again, dude, that's not impressive. I can speak other languages, too. And uh -oh, Kane, that was Cesaro that brought that up the first time, not Owens. Well, then, uh, well, Owens also did bring up because I think it was in this segment that he actually started speaking French, like, oh, I can do that, too. And then he started speaking French to Del Rio, like trash talking him in that language. Yeah, we had like a whole French exchange here, didn't we? Uh, Yeah, I, we did. I, I think Del Rio was keeping up with the Spanish and then Owens. Yeah, he broke out the French. Yeah. Uh, but then Kane interjects. 
and says, you know, we need a team building exercise. And immediately my body tenses up because I realize something's not right here. No, uh, but I just love I'm sorry, but these small doses of corporate cane I can get behind. As long as he's not around all the time, every week, more than like once a week. I love these tiny little doses of just corporate cane shows up. The one minute he's telling ar- arson puns, the next minute he's throwing it back to Team Hell No and the team building exercises. Like, I dug that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, this was great. I, I agree with you. I think in small doses of cane like this, very enjoyable. And he puts Del Rio and Owens together, and they're going up against the Lucha Dragons. And if Owens and Del Rio lose... The Lucha Dragons will take their spot in Money in the Bank. See, and I didn't like that because that immediately removed all suspension of disbelief. And it's just like, okay, well, we know that no matter how much Owens and Del Rio bicker, they're winning. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. In fact, I don't even think this is the first time that WWE's done something like this. And I think what makes it even worse, um, because, I mean, your point's certainly valid, just sucks all the suspension out of it. It's the go-home show. Like, your card's been set yeah. to tamper with it this close. Like, who the hell are you trying to fool? Yep. So, I just I just don't think it works at all. Um, after this, I do believe we got our Cesaro backstage promo. Yep. And, you know, he starts He's got like, work to do. Yeah, it, it seems like it, but we don't even really get to, like, see him fully give his thoughts. Cause you Sammy's know what, though, John? I'll say this. I'm going to throw this out there. I think Cesaro's better on the mic than AJ Styles right now. I would agree with you. I I think for Cesaro, and you really could make the same case for AJ. I'm not saying that. Uh, but I think for Cesaro, it's, it's really contingent to a degree on who he's working off of. Because, like, with The Miz, I thought his stuff was great. Yeah. Because he was playing off the Miz Hollywood gimmick. Well, and plus Jericho, because the Miz can carry an entire promo and all Cesaro needs to do is say three words and the crowd pops. Exactly. I felt like Jericho was the same way. Like the quips that Cesaro had towards Jericho, that was great. So I yeah. think if Cesaro is working with people that are great talkers, and yes, you heard it here, I am legitimately calling Miz, in certain contexts anyway, a great talker because I just think the character is so complete right now. Cesaro can do great work. Here, it was all right. In fact, it was even, I was even, I'll be honest with you, not that it was bad. I was a bit taken aback by Cesaro's tone here in this promo because it seemed more heelish. Dude, and and I even have literally, I'm not even joking when I tell you in my notes, I have Renee Young interview with Cesaro. Sammy shows up and we get a thing about him being childish. He says he and Cesaro are equals. Cesaro heelish. Yeah. The last line there, Cesaro felt very heelish in this. But also, can I say, I know that it was probably scripted, but I legitimately was concerned that Cesaro was pissed off at Sammy for showing up during an interview because he wasn't prepared for it. Like, I thought that was a shoot. Right, right. I thought Cesaro was going to pull, like, a freaking, was it Bill O'Reilly that did the, we'll do it live! Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought the Cesaro was going to move like he was like, I'm on a live TV show and you just show up here. But then as soon as he, uh, you know, acknowledged him as Sammy rather than referring to him as his real name, I was like, OK, good, good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I this kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit because I, I don't want to think about Cesaro going healing because we know the beauteous results that came the last time uh, he did it. Dude, and it's so funny, too, because I was just saying tonight, I want I like. We always have who we think is going to win matches and who we want to win matches. And even though I think Dean Ambrose is going to win or Kevin Owens, because like I said, he is my number two, there is nobody in this match that I want to win more than Cesaro. And see, that's the funny thing, because with Kevin Owens, it's both the think and want pick for me, but Cesaro is immediately number two for who I want. Like, well, and, and my whole thing so with Cesaro good. is like just as soon as Cesaro wins, that gives me this idea of, OK, they're finally buying his stock. Yeah, yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. In fact, I think it was, I, I don't want to misquote here, I, I think it was uh, this Smart Show, because I interact with uh, so many people on Twitter. I love you guys, by the way. But somebody sent me a pic like, oh, come on, John, it wouldn't be so bad if this guy won it. And it was Cesaro in his suit with the briefcase and that one episode of SmackDown. And it's yeah. a beastly image. It is. Like, it's, it's a beastly image. Like, in all sincerity, yes. I have my agenda. I haven't been shy about it really for months, literally months. But Cesaro is an amazing athlete, and his time's got to come eventually. Like, we're all still waiting, sitting on our hands for Cesaro Lesnar to happen. Like, 
just something, some main event program or main event push that gives the nod, okay, Cesaro did grab that brass ring, he's the real deal, what have you, because, d- dude, he's a freak. And honestly, like, I don't want him to go heel, obviously, but with the with the suit and everything he's got going on, could he pull it off with this? Maybe, but I think he's still got so much to give as a baby face that that's kind of why this promo rubbed me the wrong way. Because I'm like, no, you're doing so good, Cesaro section and everything. Um, but yeah, it was fine, because it was just building up to a match that I think we got after this, and that being Sami Zayn versus Cesaro. So what do you think about this match, Ashton? Hey, yeah, it was all right. I honestly... This match wasn't even as good as what both Sami Zayn and Cesaro as individuals did in the main event segment tonight, I felt. Uh, I would agree with you there to a point. I think my main problem with this, and maybe it's unfounded, I just, like, what they were doing was good. I was waiting for that match, though, to get to second gear. I don't think this match got enough time. Uh, well, that, and, that and I think, yeah. plus, not only that, it was forgettable, though, too. And I don't even know if it being forgettable is exclusively its own fault because this match was immediately following or immediately followed by the big contract signing. That was easily segment of the night for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I completely agree with you. On oh, and, and I'm looking right now and this match got just over eight minutes. Yeah. See, I don't think that was enough time. I don't I know don't... if you remember. I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but I think it was last week, actually, because that was when we had the three singles matches for the Money in the Bank guys. Right. And we we had that again tonight, didn't we? No, we didn't because of the tag match. But yeah, I, I I pointed out last week that I felt like matches in general that were between like seven, eight-ish and 15 minutes didn't get enough time, but also got too much time at the same time. Because they, right. like, if you fall in that, that category, you're going to kind of suffer from – not having enough time to tell a really good story and a good comprehensive story, but also you don't have little enough time to keep the crowd interested. Like telling a three minute story is so much easier than telling an exactly 10 minute story because in the 10 minute story, it's really hard to pace it so that you end at exactly 10 minutes. It's easier to go out to 20 or to just do three or four. Right. Right. And tonight four of the six matches fell in that seven to 15 minute dead zone right the yeah. only ones that didn't were paid charlotte which was two and a half minutes and Seamus Ryder, which is two minutes so we didn't have a single match over 13 and a half minutes tonight and that was the, the beginning that was gallows anderson and the vaude villains against new day and enzo and Cass. yeah you know i gotta really for me personally i've got to color this match as almost a missed opportunity for wwe here because I think they could have told a really great story. Well, given the we've pre- seen them. We've seen them tell amazing stories yeah. in NXT. Yeah, and that's just my point. I think with the preceding promo that you got with Sami Zayn being like, you don't treat me that way. We're equals. If you would have had him go out and go those 20 minutes with Sami yes. being beastly and aggressive and just uppercutting the shit out of Sami and they Sami could digs have down literally, deep. They could have done a spot for spot replication of their first ever NXT match with Cesaro going over, and I would have been ecstatic about it. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing, though. I do think it was smart, and I would have had Sammy go over. I think the decision was smart, because Sammy's just asserting himself. He's like, we are equals. I deserve to be taken seriously in this match. But it would have been more emotionally resonant if it was after, like, a 20-minute barn burner where Cesaro was just, again, uppercutting the shit out of Sammy. And Sammy Sammy was just kind of kicking out of everything, and then he gets, like, the the quick roll-up win. Yeah, quick roll-up win or, like, one thing that Sammy does best, I never thought I'd be heaping so much praise on Sammy in one segment, but he does, like, the exhaustive... Yeah. come back so well like oh, yeah. oh i'm i'm on e but i'm gonna give everything i have just to win he does it so much better than cena he does he he no he's next level with the way he does it you know and who else does that really well that i can't wait to come back who's that I, I i want you to try and guess and use my context clue i can't wait for him to get back well then it would have to be an injury yeah uh not orin no nope. Who else is injured right now besides everybody? Uh, Neville? Neville, yeah. There you go. Oh, thank Dude. God. I really thought that was going to be an awkward, like, take so many times. Yeah, no, Neville's I wouldn't have let it. I was starting to say mm, right as, as you said Neville, so. <laughs> right. Good, good. Yeah. But, yeah, I agree. You know, Neville's another one. Neville's another one. Oh, my God. I, I know, I, dude. I wish he would have been in this so bad. Yeah, like, I think he would have been. I think he was on a trajectory where this year would have been really good to him had he not gotten injured and. 
Yeah, it's really a shame. Um, but Sammy does win after a, a almost like a Yoshi tonic sunset flip kind of power bomb. Uh, you know, he looks up at the briefcase. He's all fired up. So just kind of looking on, you know, what have you. So we get that. And then we get to the contract signing. Now, Ashton, you've really been putting, I mean, you even just said a few moments ago, this is your segment of the night. I'm going to have you take the reins on this. Give okay. us all your thoughts on this. Not only was this my segment of the night, John Cena just delivered my promo of the year so far. Wow. Okay. Now let's, let's explore that. What exactly did he say that really resonated with you? It was this whole segment. I feel like Cena just completely knocked it out of the park and especially before AJ even got out there. But it, and I say that, but then even after AJ said something, Cena's retort was a plus two. Cause when Cena starts things out, just like listing, oh, well, you know, you, you could go to PWG or ROH or New Japan. I'm like, oh, my God, he just gave PWG a rub. What? And it was awesome. And especially, too, because I actually heard a rumor that PWG might be close to signing a national TV deal. So that's huge. And, and like, and the, just this whole thing where he's basically telling – He's telling AJ, like, dude, you're just another indie guy if you keep going at it at this angle. Because we've heard everything that you're saying right now from so many people before. You're like, it was like in, um, in the movie Eight Mile. I don't know if you're familiar with this, the Eminem movie, where yeah, he, yeah. He, he cuts a rap promo cutting down himself and talking about how much of a piece of shit he is and how much of a, like, a white trash trailer trash piece of garbage he is to kind of remove all of the ammunition from his opponent's gun. Well, Cena did the opposite. Cena is what would have happened if Eminem wouldn't have gone first in that rap battle. He told AJ every single thing that everyone was thinking that is wrong with AJ's argument right now before AJ could bring it up. Like it was brilliant. It was amazing. It was so good. And I, like I said, the shout outs to PWG and ring of honor and new Japan, like that was just ace as well. And I love to like, I feel like, like these guys were like having a meeting with Vince and Vince was like, all right, you guys can go out there. You can say anything you goddamn want. But if I so hear as so much as hear you thinking about saying the words TNA, you will be fired immediately. <laughs> And they worked around it. And I, and I got to say, too, you know, it's amazing to me because everybody knows the one, probably my most hated promo of all time, the glass jaw promo that John Cena cut on Orton. Yeah. It's like he's done a complete 180 on that. Yep. Learn from his mistakes, because I will say this. Cena does defend himself and he does look great. But holy fuck, does he put over AJ Styles? And that's like, what I love so much about this, too, was that he... Like, it's really hard to get AJ Styles to look like the bad guy, but right. Cena managed to make AJ look like the biggest douchebag in this segment, if for no other reason, because he was so nice to AJ during this promo, and then AJ comes out and says the same old shit. Yeah, yeah, and that's really been, like, the past two weeks, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. Like, I think Cena, and I don't mean this in an insulting way, but again— relative to that promo that I hate, the glass jaw promo, he's really learned how to cut a promo as a guy in his spot. Like, oh, I'm going to put this guy insanely over, tell his story, but also remind him, hey, all that stuff you're spewing at me, all, all this heat you're bringing to the fight, I've heard it all before. Yeah. You're going to have to do better than that. Dude, Cena's it's been so next cool, too, and that actually just made me think. Do you remember, I think it was on the Steve Austin podcast with Johnny Mundo where he said, as a heel... Your job is to either take what the fans want away from them or give them something that they don't want. Right. And John Cena, and, and if you're a babyface, you're supposed to just give the fans what they want. And this is the perfect segment to illustrate that because John Cena wants so badly to give the fans what we want, which is just straight up, no shenanigans involved, one-on-one -on -one match between AJ and Cena we probably would even like it if it was face versus face and Cena is leaving that door open here. AJ, I know you beat me up, but you can still be a good guy. If you just accept that, I like you and AJ just comes out and slaps him in the mouth. Yeah. Oh yeah. God. Cena absolutely killed this promo. And I mean, in the best way possible, I don't mean killed as in like, you know, in a bad way. I mean, right, right. He killed it. He was amazing. I mean, you and I are in resounding agreement here. And I got to say, from a promo story building context, 
man, is this feud off on the right foot to me. Oh, like, it's I, so funny that you said that because when you said, man, is this feud, I was thinking you were going to say, man, is this feud one-sided because to like AJ Styles is coming out here cutting like D plus C minus barely getting by promos and Cena's knocking it out of the park every time. And the funny thing too about that is that a lot of people will argue, Oh, well, I mean, Cena is killing Styles on the promo, but Styles is going to kill Cena in the match. That's not even true. Cena's like a solid eight out of 10 in the ring. Styles is like a five out of 10 on the mic. That's like, it's not even close. I mean, you know, that remains to be seen. I do agree with you, though. Cena, and and we've seen it in matches with Kevin Owens, Cesaro, CM Punk, the list goes on and on. Like, he brings it with guys like this. He's going to bring it against AJ. And that's why, like, has has, uh, AJ been horrendous on the mic to me? Eh, not necessarily. He could be a lot. Well, you say horrendous, and I think that might be slightly hyperbolic, but... He's been not good. Like, I, I can't even say he's been uh, okay because I think he's been below that even. I, I just – I feel like AJ – and I don't even think it's necessarily a delivery problem, so I don't even think it's a problem with AJ. I think a lot of it is to do with what he's being given to work with because they're giving him all of the stuff that we heard from Punk, that we heard from Brian, that we heard from Owens. We're hearing all the same stuff all over again. And AJ Styles is like the king of that crop, that specific type of – performer he's like the king of them and he's saying everything that they already said so like it it really i think devalues him yeah he's just gotta because here's the thing we heard it from punk and and we even kind of had this conversation i believe just last week yeah punk's whole idea was i'm the best you're not the best everybody thinks you're the best and it makes me sick because i'm the best kevin owens took it which started this whole infamous trend like oh i'm a father all these kids they love you john even my own son loves you more than he loves me in this ring. And that's what he used, like his just mass marketing appeal. AJ needs to find something that he can make uniquely his own. And then I think his promo game would step up. I don't know what that is. I don't have the answer. I'm merely... Because right now he's basically just trying to get over that he's a better wrestler than Cena. Right. Which I... I don't think even Cena would argue that. Like, AJ Styles shows up, I'm a better wrestler than you, John Cena! Yeah, I agree. Handshake. Let's go. I'm out, man. You're right. I'm, I'm going to leave now. Can I go get some KFC with my family? Uh, you know, I'm running late. Exactly. Nick, Nikki is – oh, no. Nikki would never accept KFC. It would have to be some, like, high-quality diner. You're like, ew, that's gross. But, um – yeah, okay, so man. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, you know, no, you're absolutely right, man. Uh, it, it, it's just AJ's got to find something and make it uniquely his own. Because even CM Punk, even though in essence one of the things he was saying was, I'm a better wrestler than you, it wasn't just wrestling. Like, but Punk yeah, really exactly. Believed. He was also yeah. saying, I'm a better talker than you. And not only am I a better wrestler and talker than you, I'm a better wrestler and talker than everyone. Exactly. You just so, happen to be the guy that I consider to be the top of the pyramid, which is why I'm going after you, because I think and, it's better than the best. But I got to say, and this is how I'm going to punctuate my side of the segment, unless you have anything you want to say, and then I'll put the ball back to you. Yeah, Even if AJ did find anything uniquely his own, Cena's just been next level lately, man. Like, I think it'd be even hard like to, to stand yeah. toe-to-toe with this references. John Cena. The references that Cena was throwing out were just so spot on. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Is there anything else you want to say about this? Yeah. Well, I, I we didn't even talk about Cena's retort yet, have we? Uh, wait. Yeah, that's right. Because AJ does sign, right? The um, the contract just him and Cena one on one because he's no. just laying on the goal. No, you don't mean that. What? That's not. No, I'm talking about his first retort when AJ first comes out and says all the same stuff that we've already heard a million times, and then Cena comes back with all this stuff about how you know. We might need to put you on a bullet train back to Japan because it seems like you left your balls there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Cena Damn. was so on point tonight. It's rid- And then, of course, the funny thing, too, we've got AJ, like his last words were about how Cena and his Kmart shop an ass, as if a massive majority of the WWE universe doesn't already shop at Kmart. Yeah. It Implying almost- AJ Styles doesn't shop at Kmart. I would put money on the fact that he has. It almost just seemed like AJ was just, like, frustrated at that point. 
And it's like, they're fine, just stop it, leave me alone. <gasps> oh my god, and that was another thing. The, like, the whole thing, like, insulting John Cena because of the Kmart at sponsorship, that just throws me back to Cesaro. <laughs> when he was trying to cut down Cena, and all they could say was, where do you buy your shoes, John? Kmart? <laughs> <laughs> I miss bad jokes, Cesaro, man. He was so good. Yeah, he really uh, was. Oh, man. But yeah, this, yeah. Cena knocked this promo out of the park. Rollins, or Rollins. AJ was just scraping by. AJ is going to need to put on the performance of his life to make up for this promo work if he wants to come anywhere close to being seen as Cena's equal. And, hey, we'll see if he can do it this Sunday. I, I think AJ has the capability. I think these two have the capability to do one hell of a barn burner of a match. Hey, I'm we'll talk about to. that when we get to our preview and predictions. I actually have a lot on my mind about this match as far as, you know, the hype behind it and stuff like that. Right. Can't wait to hear it. That'll be preview and predictions, guys. It'll be a must-see video, as always. But we go from that to Kevin Owens and Del Rio versus the Lucha Dragons. Yeah. You know, part of me, here's the thing. Part of me didn't care for this match for exactly the points you alluded to earlier when we were talking about it. You know, sucks all the suspension out, this and that. Plus, we already but saw But the other team. part, that's a huge Kevin Owens mark, loved it because he ended up doing all the work and getting over. <laughs> but he even explicitly said, I have to do all, I do everything. Like, <laughs> I just love angry. I'm so tired of everybody else's shit. I'm the yeah. only one that's good around here, Kevin Owens. Like, yeah. I just, I, I love I, the guy. I might get a little bit annoyed by Kevin Owens in like these backstage pre-tapes and on commentary and stuff where it's more improvisational and he has this constant need to get the last word, but big banter. Kevin Owens is the goat. Oh dude. I got, like, I'm telling you, man, like I, I really do. I think I even tweeted this a few days ago. Like it's Johnny Mundo and Lucha underground and just period Johnny Mundo period. Do but you then know WWE's what like, the greatest yeah, match Kevin. in wrestling history would be? What's that? A six pack challenge. Okay. Kevin Owens, Baron okay. Corbin, Mark Henry, Scott Steiner, Jack Evans, and Cage. Oh my God. The trash talking that would be so next level. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, I have found that I almost enjoy, like, banter and trash talk during matches more than the matches themselves. And you know what? I can totally understand you there because some of the trash talk that Kevin Owens does in the context of a match just, man, it gets me. And it, it just throws me back to Mark Henry as world champion. I didn't tell you you could stand up. Y'all haters. <laughs> God, fuck him. I even watched, speaking of Mark Henry, I watched his fall retirement speech a few days ago again. Uh, man, that's so good. You think it's that easy? I got a lot left in the tank. He's so angry. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Just be the world's largest loser. <laughs> you and your heavy breathing need to go to the back of the line. <laughs> Don't let your foolish pride get in the way of this business. Oh, my God, Mark. Why it didn't happen sooner, what could have been. But what we're looking at right now, yeah, you know... Kevin Owens, Del Rio, they have the obligatory miscues. Oh, could the Lucha Dragons pull this off? But I think the only thing that made up for it, and yes, Kevin Owens is banter. Because every time he screamed at Del Rio, what are you doing? We're going to lose! <laughs> <laughs> and then Del Rio's about to get counted out, and he just tosses him into the ring, drags him over to the corner, and tags himself in, only to meet a massive flurry of Sin Cara offense. <laughs> It was so good, too, because Sin Cara did a springboard crossbody, and then he did a springboard back elbow, and then he did a springboard moonsault, and then he got Papa power bombed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude, dude, here's the thing, and I, and I mean this with all sincerity, like, I'm having the time of my life right now. Like, I know, yeah, the KO for Money in the Bank 2016 may be a little much and stuff, but I'm just having so much fun with everybody, and I'm having so much fun doing Like, I tweeted tonight, and, like, I'm even laughing rereading it again. I'm like, do you guys notice how Kevin Owens did everything and that tag match and still got unjustly assaulted at the end story of his life right there because it is like he did everything and then when he's celebrating keeping both him and del rio in the match he gets super kicked because that's classy right fuck yeah. off del you're Pitchback. welcome del river 
<laughs> oh my god. So yeah, dude, even if he doesn't win, which don't get me wrong, I will be crushed if he doesn't win. But like, I've just had so much fun on the road to KO and the bank. It's been amazing. Can I ask so, you a question? Sure. I'm assuming Del Rio is going to be one of, if not the only answer to this. Who all in the Money in the Bank match would you legitimately be disappointed by winning? Uh, Del Rio, definitely, you're right. And Jericho, actually, because as much as I love Jericho, like, I, I just don't see how that fits. Because, like, even if, if Sammy would come out of nowhere and he'd win it, like, as the right. underdog pick, and he's legitimately, he's literally yeah. the underdog from the underground. Similar I, to, like, Brian's win in 2013. Exactly, they could... Actually, 2013, I, that's way later. Brian won the Money in the Bank in 2011. Wasn't it 20... I thought it was... No, 2010 was Kane. You're right, it was 2011. Yeah, it was 2011. Um, I'm, I'm, my years are way off, yeah, because that was the year that Mark Henry was world champion, and then he dropped the title of the Big Show, only to have Brian immediately cash in and win the title from Big Show. But no, I, I'll be honest with you. Like, even, say, hypothetically, like, like, if Sammy would win it, with how Roman Reigns gets booed... I know. If they were to do Sammy Zayn versus Roman Reigns, with yeah. giving all the praise that I just gave to Sammy in the preceding segment, him versus Cesaro, how he can do exhaustive comebacks and stuff like that, dude, the drama and the tension in that match would be insane for so many different reasons. So, yeah, even Sammy winning, and I say this uh, legitimately, could be pulled off. Jericho and Del Rio are the only two guys I really feel that disconnect. Like, how do you... How do you work that? Ambrose, it's obvious. Uh, Kevin Owens, I think, you know, his heel stock. And he could just be very opportunistic with his cash in. That I mean, if work. anyone can get Roman cheered by an even slightly wider margin of the audience, I think Kevin Owens, The Miz, and Rusev are the guys you want going against him. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, Jericho and Del Rio are the only ones where I'd be like, why? Yeah. <laughs> And, and Honestly, I, I agree with you on Del Rio for sure. Jericho, I can't make up my mind on because I loved what he did to close the show tonight. And he's been doing the best work of his career. And, I mean, I know I only brought up Owens and Miz and Rusev, but Jericho's another guy where you put him against Roman with the work he's been doing. Actually, you know what? I take that back because he, he's doing such good work that the crowd would cheer him out of sheer principle. <laughs> And, dude, here's the thing, right? You're not even wrong. Yeah. Like, the work Jericho's been doing has been so fucking good. The Stupid gift idiots. Jericho, the gift of Jericho. Drink it in, man. Drink it in, man. <laughs> I love it, right? It's just dude, just because of the way he talks when he does that, I want a feud between him and Wyatt again now. <laughs> right heal, now. heal Jericho versus babyface Wyatt. Yeah, oh we can my get, god, dude. Drink it in, man. Versus they've been lying to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just think with Jericho, why I have a problem, and I'll be honest, like, I'm always waiting for when's the other shoe going to drop and he's going to go back on tour. Because yeah. I think if he had that briefcase, I would think, oh, is he going to cash it in and lose this way he could go back and tour with Fozzie? Oh, like, if oh, I knew oh. Jericho was sticking around, yeah. dude, absolutely. I'd be like, give him one. He made the damn match. Give him one. Like <laughs> That would be almost like the one time that they gave the big show, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, not because it was a smart decision, just because, like, you know, let's just just give it to him. You know, <laughs> it's the it same thing with Jericho. Like, exactly, exactly. It's like. But a big thing. I mean, honestly, if the WWE was a meritocracy, I feel like Jericho would be a legitimate contender for the title. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It would. It would almost have to be between him and Owens if it was meritocracy, because those are the guys that are doing the best work right now. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, those are the two guys. I mean, and, and by the way, given what we just said about Jericho, you can guess that Del Rio would be at the top of the list as far as disappointment would go. Because yeah. he would win it, and I would just be like, what do you see in him? Like, why? Well, maybe, maybe, you know what? I'm bringing up, again, I talked about Miz, Rusev, and who else was it? Uh, Owens. Right. As, as guys that could get Roman cheered. Maybe Del Rio could also, because he no, nobody likes him. I mean, granted, a, a vast majority of the audience just flat out doesn't care about him, but the people that do have feelings towards him, they don't like him. Right. So, I don't know. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're not we, wrong. But... The thing is, like, we've got to look at the result of this pay-per-view, the result of this match specifically, through the scope of what the WWE is thinking and, and how they're going to use it. Right, yeah. So if their if their exclusive goal is to get Roman as as over as possible, that narrows the field down to pretty much just Owens and Del Rio. Yeah. We'll see. And if you're we'll gauging the winner based on who would get the least cheers in a match with Roman, 
Del Rio. Del Rio's probably the answer, yeah. God damn it, man. God yeah. damn it. I wanted to push Del Rio out of the back of my mind, and you just gave him a nice seat at the forefront. And and Fuck. they've been talking, too, about how he's the only one that's ever won this match before. Yeah, which I almost felt like kind of axed him out on a principle, but... but that's, we have... uh, yeah, that's like almost like a... Uh, uh, what's it called? When you make up your mind and then every information you kind of warp in a way to make it fit. Confirmation your... bias. Yeah, exactly. It's a confirmation bias. Like... At that point, just because you already had it in your mind that he wasn't winning, anything that got said or done, you would have said, oh, well, that that just furthers the idea that he's not winning. Yeah, same but thing, I mean, at the same, same thing th- with Owens winning. Everything that happens is, oh, that might mean that he's going to win, right? Yeah, but just, just to pick my hands up and defend myself a little here, I don't think we've ever had like a two-time Money in the Bank winner, have we? Dude, Edge, Punk. Well, I mean, CM C- C- Punk, yeah, you are right, yeah. Yeah, so I guess Del Rio didn't, is on the table. Didn't Cena win it twice, or am I dreaming? No, he only won it once. Okay. But you are Just right. And, the one time and the one image of him winning it has been memed all to hell. Yeah, I mean, Punk was the was the only one that legitimately won it, like, in the context of ladder matches, because the second time Edge won it was off of an injured Mr. Kennedy. Off of, right, exactly, yeah. Well, wait. No, never mind. You're right, yeah. Those are the only guys that I can think of that won it twice. Right, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. I guess I do have to take Del Rio a bit more seriously. It's just, like, you came out of the League of Nations, which is nothing, and he's just been kind of there, but, I mean, hey. Rusev uh, also came out of the League of Nations, and look where he is right now. That is true. That is true. And then you look at guys that are just kind of there. I mean, you know, Jack Swagger wasn't doing anything special when he won Money in the Bank, so, you know, I guess there really is no leg to stand on. I guess Del Rio is as credible as anybody, so we'll just have to wait and see Sunday. But, uh, you know, after that, we get The Miz on the set of The Marine, and just saying, like, you know, you guys keep doing... We miss doing... you, Miz. Well, actually, we do. I'll, I'll be honest, to a degree, I actually felt his absence on this show. Yeah, well, uh, we felt it on last show, too. Yeah, so, like, to see him come back. And, you know, it's even weirder because he is a champion. So, I think that's why it's even yeah, heavier. Yeah, that's the, like, that's the big thing. That's why we felt his absence so much, too, is because, like, this entire build-up to this one show... Everyone that you would think would be going after the Intercontinental title has actually been going after the Money in the Bank briefcase. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just so weird. You know, I don't I don't think I'm really used to it. I don't think I'll be used to it for the entire time that he's gone. But, yeah, he pretty much said, you guys keep up your good work and I'll keep doing good work over here. And, like, it's cheesy, like, obnoxious kind of way. And then uh, he, he talked to the guy that was his assistant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, who's awesome? And he's just like, uh, uh, you? Go get me my coffee. (laughs) After that, we get Owens backstage with Stephanie, uh, pretty much complaining because Shane agreed to let Sami Zayn be out on commentary. And, you know, Owens said, you know, Stephanie, we could fix this. If Sami Zayn's out on commentary, I deserve to be out on commentary, too. Stephanie agrees, then Del Rio comes in, and everyone's like, oh, what, are you you kissing up? And he does more Spanish, and and, then Owens is pretty much like, why? Like, why why all the languages all the time? Like, what what is it? And so Del Rio is special guest timekeeper, and then I I think uh, they also have, like, Shane, I guess, comes in, and he said, you know, Shane can be guest ring announcer then. Like, you're messing with this match. Shane's going to be, or Cesaro's going to be guest ring announcer. So we have all that. And then we get our main event, Jericho versus Ambrose, a rematch from SmackDown. Yep. Uh, we, we saw the SmackDown match, Ashton, so I'm going to ask you, how do you feel like this stacked up uh, against their SmackDown match? Do you think they did better this time around, or was the SmackDown match better, or what were your thoughts? Just from a match standpoint, I felt like SmackDown's was better, but from an entire segment standpoint, this was better because of the post-match. Yeah, post-match was great. Yeah. You definitely knew something was going down because you had uh, Owens and Zayn on commentary who do not like each other at all, which has been clearly documented. They Cesaro hate doing. Faces. Beg pardon? They hate each other's faces. Yeah, majorly. Uh, Cesaro doing in ring introduction, saying Jericho was from uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, but now resides in stupid idiotville. Uh, and then Cesaro was like, oh, Ambrose looks like he just got out of bed. So he's kind of, you know, kind of poking fun at both guys. And yeah, I agree with you. From a match standpoint, I do feel like SmackDown was superior, but given all of the narrative elements, like all the Money in the Bank participants out there for the main event, I thought that that kind of gave it a better atmosphere. Yeah. Ambrose does get the win after Dirty Deeds. Uh, you know, a lot of great quips between Owens and Zayn, both on commentary. And, you know, Ambrose gets the win, but then it doesn't take long for it all to devolve into chaos. Big brawl breaks out. Uh, I, uh, you know, one moment that sticks out for me, Owens tries grabbing a ladder, but I think it was Jericho that baseball slid it into him. 
Like, yeah, no, yeah. it was Ambrose. It was Ambrose that did it. Okay, so yeah, Ambrose did the baseball slide to Owens with the ladder. And yeah, everybody's just kind of killing each other. And then Zayn does this crazy dive onto virtually everybody. Everybody that is, except Chris Jericho, who was very opportunistic, Ashton. I love this so much because Jericho just this just shitty grin on his face. Gets the ladder, sets it up, climbs it, grabs the briefcase, and then sits on top of the ladder and crosses his legs the same way Adam crossed last week. Yeah, all the people that uh, – and it's funny, too, because he does that pose, which he was very heavily made fun of you know, for it last week. Well, and he, he was does... made, fun of it, made, of, made fun of for it by Dean Ambrose, but you and I had a discussion last week about who's, who was the most comfortable on their ladder, and I praised Jericho for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and he sits that way again. I mean, who's laughing now because he's sitting that way with the Money in the Bank briefcase? Yep. So, message I hope sent. he does it at the pay-per-view just to screw with people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. That'd be so- oh, oh, I'm sorry. You thought Ambrose is going to win. You thought Owens is going to win. Oh, no, it's the gift of Jericho. Drink it in, man. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, but yeah, that was raw. And I got to say, when you think about how go home raws before pay-per-views really punctuate themselves, this is a better punctuation that, that we've had in quite some time. Like, I yeah. love the imagery I would agree and just that. everything. Yep. Yeah, this is great. All right, next segment, high spots and low shots. Uh, I'm going to say my low shot is Charlotte, actually, because no matter who you align yourself with, you're still terrible. So you lost to Paige tonight because the person you thought was going to be such great help to you threw you back in the ring aggressively. How do you even get your bearings back after that? You ate a rampage and you lost. So, yeah, Charlotte's my low shot. I can buy that. I can buy that. I think my... Man, my low shot almost, I don't know. It, I want to make it Titus O'Neil because he got beat down, but he's getting a U.S. title match for nothing, so I can't do that. Ryder would be, but we don't ever really have expectations for him anyway, so why bother? So right. <laughs> uh, Jericho lost a match, but then he also ended up standing tall at the end of the show. I think I'm just going to say screw it. My low shot's Roman because no one cares about him and he didn't stand tall in the go-home show. That is true. Yeah, Ambrose of all people laid him out. It wasn't even his opponent. It was a no. potential threat in Dean Ambrose. He laid his opponent out because, of course, we've got to make sure that that gets, you know, sorted out. But, no, Ambrose ended up taking him out to close the show or to close that segment. Uh, All right. Well, you know what? My I've got high... so many honorary high spots tonight. Well, you know what? I'm I'm going to ha- give you that whole field to play with because I'm only going to have one high spot. And, yep, it's Kevin Owens. Oh, because of course. Even though he-, he got super kicked for saving his tag partner from not having a Money in the Bank shot. Yeah, he did get assaulted, but when the stakes were highest, he got the winning pin and he won. He kept his and, He had everything to lose tonight. And, and he, he also it. got a baseball slide ladder to the face. Yeah, he got physically assaulted, sure, like everybody else these past few weeks. But when he had the most to lose, because Roman wasn't defending his title tonight, nobody was defending their title tonight, Kevin Owens was defending his pay-per-view spot, and he gets the winning pin. He did everything in that tag match, so you're damn right he's my eyes, bud. Screw it, so what? He's got a few cuts and bruises. He's still able to go to Money in the Bank. Which is all that matters. Exactly. It's everything, dude. It's everything. <laughs> You're going to be so devastated when he doesn't win. <laughs> dude, if he wins, I'm laughing at everybody. I'm I hope you do. I'm going to be so happy for you if he wins, but if he doesn't, oh my god, I'm going to laugh so hard in your face. Dude, I just, and you know what? I, I'll take it. I'll want to punch you in the face, but I'll take it. <laughs> I just think that Ambrose is just a giant smokescreen. I, I really do. I... Uh. KO in the back. Ba- KO for money in the bank. 2016 I, trend it. I honestly, on my list of who I want to win, Owens is higher than Ambrose. So I kind of hope you're right. There you go. I mean, Hey, that works. I just, I just, I want it. <laughs> and everybody that's done this whole KO for money in the bank 2016 with me, it's going to be amazing. The notifications yeah. I'm going to get on Twitter and the notifications yeah. I'll be sending out. It's Thanks be a party. lot, John, for devolving our comments section from thoughtful, insightful discussion into hashtags. Hey, you know what? I didn't tell them comment KO for Money in the Bank 2016 on the YouTube. They can do it on Twitter. I never said YouTube. I always reiterate your sentiments. Comment down below, guy. Talk to us, talk to us, talk to us. Free will's a thing, Ashton. Free will is a thing. So now, 
I'm going to give you the field to play with. Who are your honorary high spots and who's your actual high spot? Okay, my first honorary high spot is Kane because he was entertaining tonight, which is something that's really, really a big step up for him. Yes. My second high spot... Oh, I almost just gave away my actual high spot. My second high spot is Dean Ambrose because he stood tall. Even though he didn't stand tall to end the show, he stood tall in his segment. Right. My third high spot is Sheamus because Zack Ryder is horrible. Yes. My fourth honorary high spot is your boys, Del Rio and Owens, for their big win tonight. What was that? I was just maybe like, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. excited. My fifth honorary high spot is Sami Zayn because he won a match tonight, and that's huge. Right. And finally, my actual high spot is... I know it. John I know Cena. It. That's why I didn't pick him. And that's the thing, too. I should say, like, yeah, I, I did legitimately pick Owens, but Cena was in my back pocket, but I'm like, no, with how praiseworthy Ashton was of him, yeah. I knew you were going to take him. So I'm I like, I trusted you there, and you came through. So good yeah. stuff. Because I would have I would have felt... Tonight. This was... I don't know, man, since he's been back, other than the one ridiculous super pro America, you know, pandering promo that he cut, he's been on fire. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I would have felt so bad if like I misread the situation and you didn't pick him because he deserved a spot in this segment. Yeah. Yeah. With how great he was. Like I would have even had to backtrack and be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Since you didn't go the (laughs) way I thought, just want to say honor high spot John Cena for the best promo of all time. You know, pulling a Kanye there. Um, (laughs) Yeah. You read that situation like a freaking caption. Good. Good. (laughs) I'm, I'm really glad. Now, just a quick, just a quick question, because I need a reminder of how we do things here, which is really sad, given that we've been doing this for so long. Wow! Don't don't we not do raw requests on the week of a pay per view? Isn't there a segment we usually skip, or is that thirty second hot seat? That is correct. Okay, so we don't do raw requests. No, so raw requests, we we try, we try to kind of you know only do those when the following week on Raw is actually going to be something that's like in in continuity, which right. pay per views break up continuity, so skip it. Exactly. So that only leaves one segment, 30 second hot seat. Ashton, take it away. Well, this has actually worked out really well because we don't have a women's championship match. So I can actually ask you a WWE related 30 second hot seat and not have it spoil preview predictions. Okay. Okay. We are already under the assumption that Sasha and Charlotte are going to be going after each other at SummerSlam. Can you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So now my 30 second hot seat for you is what kind of women's championship match are we going to get at battleground? And more importantly, who will be the woman to take the title off Charlotte? You have 30 seconds. Your time starts now. I could see the match at battleground, honestly being a fatal four way Charlotte versus page versus Natalia versus Becky. I would see Charlotte coming out on top in that scenario. Ultimately, the woman that's going to take the title off Charlotte, and I'm sure BX Girl HS is going to love this, Sasha fucking Banks. She is the only... Honestly, Sasha Banks, I have treated that WWE Women's Championship as her championship since the day it was introduced. So, yeah, Sasha's definitely ending Charlotte's reign. Perfect. 30 seconds is up, and I agree with you completely. And you know what? Not even 30 second hot seat, but I want to toss in, do you agree with me that Sasha Bailey needs to happen at Mania? Oh, absolutely. If they're smart, they'll do it. Yeah. If they're absolutely well, smart, they'll do it. I mean, that's like saying they're not going to do it because we all know they're not. And, and that's just it. Like, I know they're not, but they should. Um, okay. You know, so do you think they're going to do the big four horsemen, fatal four women, four way, four? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the four horsemen, fatal four way. Uh, four horse, right. four horse women, fatal four way. Yes. Yeah. I is what I was what... trying to say. Yes. Um, yeah, I could see that because Bailey has to come up to the main roster this year. I would think. Oh, she's getting drafted. She's getting drafted July 11th. She is going to be on the main roster. Let's hope dude. Let's hope because that's that's four weeks away. I know, dude. I know. I can't wait for our mock draft person. That's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so it's that's three and a half weeks away. Holy hell. Yeah, dude, it's going to be a great time. But yeah, I agree with you. That fatal four way I think is more likely to happen. I do think. 
Sasha Bailey deserve the stage all to themselves because if you want the best WrestleMania, you should have the best people in each division representing at that WrestleMania. Oh yeah, that's right. They have to cornhole Charlotte into everything. <laughs> right. Now then again, it's Becky. It's more Charlotte that I'm concerned with. I but mean, yeah, I wouldn't I mean, mind a triple threat Becky Sasha Bailey. No, I mean certainly but not. Just, but you know what though, Charlotte just. Just go away, please. I, I have to say, though, like, and nothing against Becky, and I, I really hope I don't get assaulted for this, but, like, in ring, yeah, totally, but narratively, like, even Becky wouldn't fit. I would want her to get out of the way, too. I feel like she'd be clogging things up. Like, I Dude. think Sasha Bailey could tell an amazing story. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You said narratively. I was so worried that you were going to, like, go after Becky's talking skills, but... Oh, uh, no! Right. No, God, no. Well, no. I'm, I'm glad that we are on the same page there, but it's just funny because... Did you see the WWE.com or the WWE Twitter or whatever it was exclusive featuring Natalia and Becky when Tom made the announcement official that they were going to be in this tag match at Money in the Bank? No, I did not see that. Okay. I'm trying to decide if I would recommend it or not. I think I would. I would recommend it exclusively for the sake of go watch how much of a difference there is between these two women as far as talking goes. Oh, yeah. Uh, because, you, you, yeah. like, Natalia starts talking, and she just as like, Tom Phillips is more charismatic than Natalia. Right. To the point that, like, he is talking and talking and talking and explaining what's going on, and then he kicks it over to Natalia, and the energy level just sinks. Like, right. it's so bad, because you hire this guy to make other people look good, and not even he can make Natalia look good. And right. she just drags it down, and then, like... When her drudging on finally ends, we kick back over to Becky and it's like a light bulb turns on and it's like, oh, this segment suddenly became, I'm sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? I forgot it when we were talking about Natalia. Oh yeah, interesting. Jesus. Right. Like it was, it was that bad when Natalia was talking and then we kick over to Becky. She clearly knows what she's doing when it comes to talking and she's just, you know, she does her quirky charismatic thing and, and it's amazing and then tom even like i feel like you can literally see the expression on his face change from just stone face while natalia's talking to smiling when becky's talking because you just can't help but smile when becky talks she has got such amazing baby face fire and she's done so much better because i will say this when she first came in i would i never thought that we'd be saying her mic skills were one of her strong suits on the main <laughs> roster yeah and yet here we are like yep. she really is fantastic Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that if done right. I just think when I think Sasha Bailey at WrestleMania, I have a certain story already in my mind and Becky just doesn't fit in that story. Not to say that we couldn't make a story that's more inclusive of Becky, but yeah, Dude, if you're going to do that's Sasha thing, Bailey like, at Mania. Becky, any story involving the women's championship can fit her, especially when it involves former NXT women's champions because she never held any title. That's so true. Becky yeah. is the only one of these four women that has never held any championship in the WWE before. That's a travesty, actually. It is, and she's, like, the second most talented of the four. Arguably right. first, but in my opinion, second. Right. And I, you and I are on that, because I'm, I'm thinking we both think, yeah, Sasha's number one. Oh, my then, God, yeah. Then Becky, then Bailey, then Charlotte. <laughs> oh, there's, there's, there's Sasha, then Becky, then Bailey, then 30 pounds of crap, then Charlotte. <laughs> the digs will never stop I'm but sorry, anyway Bailey, i didn't mean to make you stand on the crab but we need something in between you and charlotte and that's the most indicative item that i could think of uh with that said do you have any more digs you want to take in charlotte before i take us home <sighs> nothing that wouldn't be offensive well there you go all right guys this has been raw this has been twit wow the best Wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans by wrestling fans on the web today. I'm John. That's my cohort and commentary, Ashton. Guys, be sure to comment and subscribe on YouTube. Ashton, what question? Well, actually, no, I don't have to ask that. Yeah, 30, 30 second, second hot seat. Get it. 30 second hot seat is our question. So what do you think the WWE Women's Championship match is going to be at Battleground? And who ultimately do you think is going to dethrone Charlotte and mercifully end that title reign? Anybody. Sure Anybody but Dana. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anybody but you, Dana. Uh, so get that conversation started down below. Talk to us, talk to us, talk to us. Be sure to take that conversation 
over to Puitoff that is pro wrestling is taking over Facebook. And guys, if you get in on it now, we always do, you know, money in the bank predictions. It's a cool little game that we all do. You know, who could come out on top? Who's the most right about everything? So if you feel like that's up your alley, you know, that's the group for you. Spoiler uh, alert, it's probably not going to be me. <laughs> it's, it's almost never me either. So don't feel bad, guys. And uh, only you, one. You can also check out the TwitWild Facebook page, like, share, and comment on the content there. Yeah, if they... guys, we have literally like three people that just like and share everything on there. Let's get more of you. Yeah, really. I mean, come on, guys. Show us some love. We love you. We're, you know, we're accepting people. But if Facebook isn't your medium of choice, we're also on Reddit. The TwitWild subreddit has all of our TwitWild content. And members of the subreddit can create those of their own on all things related to pro wrestling. So anything on your mind related to pro wrestling, even if it's something we don't know about, we're we're not proud of our ignorance. We'll go, we'll look at it, and we'll give you an opinion then. But yeah, I mean, we've got 24 subscribers on the the TwitWow subreddit, and that just seems like such a low number. We've got almost a thousand on YouTube, 24 on on Twitter, on Reddit. Yeah, I mean. You're all amazing and wonderful. Share that wonderfulness on Reddit and on the Facebook. So, you know, get on it there. But, but, maybe you want the VIP treatment with TwitWow. Yeah. And I would recommend following both of us on Twitter. I know Here's that, the thing, uh, guys. With the Twitter, if you're not annoying, meaning you're not tweeting us about every little tiny story that you happen to read on news sites and Wrestling Inc. and Wrestling Observer or whatever, we'll pretty much reply to everything. That's true. As I mean, long I, as you're not tweeting us 12 times an hour, we'll probably reply to most of your tweets. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw you actually in deep conversation with Caltag Star today and some of the members and of the Last Real Heels. DB, DBK. DBK, who I talk to frequently. Yeah. Smart Show, I talk to frequently. Ella says stuff, who's wonderful, as is uh, Jackie on Twitter, named for Jackie O. Amazing person who knows a lot of women's wrestling. So and hey, guys, you named a few people that I'm not familiar with. I'll name a few people that you're not familiar with. How about Razor Cabrone? Yeah, I've that seen guy's him around. Awesome. He's got a podcast too. Yeah, it's yeah. It's called Still Real to Us. He does great coverage, especially on Lucha Underground. His Lucha Underground coverage is amazing. And a lot of the time he has a special guest on named The Angry Mark, who has insiders in WWE, and that's where I get a lot of my inside information from. Oh, nice. Very He's, nice. Yeah, and then and if you want to listen to more of him specifically, he has a podcast of his own called Under the Mat Radio. Very nice. Yeah. See? Look at that, guys. Look at the, look at the bonds we've hey, formed on Twitter. Just, and what you just to around. kind of put it out there, he knew about Shane before Meltzer. He knew about the brand split before Meltzer. He knew about Sasha being held off TV for storyline reasons and not because she was injured before Meltzer. This guy is legit. Yeah, I mean, who... Who knows, guys, if you want to check that out, you know, what he could say about Money in the Bank, if anything. So, might want to get on that. But see, like... And he's the, the same guy that said PWG is close to signing a national TV deal, too. Which is freaking awesome, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, guys, all these connections we formed, respectively, Ash and myself, on Twitter. If you haven't followed us, be sure to do it, because that's the kind of stuff you could uh, look forward to. I am at... And, yeah, John I mean, since we're plugging Twitter, I just spent... Uh, you know, like 15 minutes today tweeting my thoughts on the list of contenders in the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah, yeah, that list has come out. I know some people have been fielding my opinion and Ashton's opinion. I personally said, like, I'm so excited for Lense Dorado and Swan to be in it because they go back to my Force One days. Wait, did, like, wh who's Lense Dorado? Uh, you didn't see him on the list? I don't, I don't know exactly what he's working now, but I recognized him because he used to work shows in Force One. He does, like, this oh. mean shooting star press. So. Nice. Well, it's funny you bring up Dorado, because I happen to know that one of the guys that was listed Grand Metallic is actually Mascara Dorada. Nice, dude. The nice. New Japan guy that we used to get. Yes. Yeah, matches in, yeah. in G1. Yeah, he's going to be in the Cruiserweight Classic. He is amazing. That's awesome. So, yeah, like, Ashton tweets out great stuff, because, again, I saw the conversation you had today. I didn't see your thoughts on the Cruiserweight Classic. I'm going to go back and look. But, like, that's the kind of stuff. I just I mean, went on a tweeting spree. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I sent out like 10 tweets just talking about the Cruiserweight Classics. You got to go check that out. I, I've, I've said for the longest time, Ashton gives like amazing, well thought out, very informed opinions. I'm and hey, like, every now and then at 4 a.m., even though I don't get drunk, I'll still go on Twitter rants about the state of wrestling and or the, just the WWE specifically. Exactly. I'm more of like the, the pure fandom, giddy out of my pants kind of guy. I yeah, mean, you if you want if you want to see somebody just needlessly jerk off wrestlers. 
Yes, I'm John's your guy. Your guy. <laughs> I'm your guy. And you know what? Surprisingly, though, there is a market for that because I've clearly developed a following given our YouTube comment section. So, yep, exactly. You know, there's a market for both, guys. I am at John underscore Twitwow. That is J O H N underscore Twitwow. Ashton is at a pond 404. That's the letter A, pond the body of water, P O N D 404. I swear, I'm, guys, once we hit the 1,000 subscriber special, all of our backgrounds are going to have this information on them, and we won't have to go through this entire outro every time. You you have just got it all planned out, man. <laughs> hit that number. Hit that number to save yourselves, people. You don't want to keep hearing this every week. Maybe I'm projecting. But regardless, we will see you again for our Lucha Underground Live Reactions. Episode 21, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, only three episodes left to hold them a Lucha. Yeah, three episodes left before they take me all the way up, and then I go all the way back down because we have to wait for season three. But luckily, we've got a podcast to listen to, actually, because Eric Van Wagenen did a podcast recently where he talked about the possibility of Lucha Underground season three happening this year. We don't have to wait till 2017 for it. That's right, because fuck waiting, immediacy for the win. Yeah. But after our live reactions, you can always get the best, more substantive coverage on our formal Lucha Underground reviews. Always love doing them. Lucha Underground is the best show to me on TV right now, period. And so you guys could check us out there. And until then, and by the way, you know, on this episode, it's six to survive. So it's going to oh, be that's amazing. that's right. Oh, let's, Winner let's go goes, through. So, okay, so we've got Mundo. We've got Mundo, Taya, Taya, we've got Pentagon, we've got Phoenix, we've got Son of Havoc? No, no. King Cuerno. No, 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 not Son of Havoc. Ivalice and King Cuerno. Yeah, it is six to survive. One goes to the main event of Ultima Lucha, the other five go elsewhere, and your best coverage is right here at TwitWow. And until then, tune in and peace out. <laughs>